out on the field ready to go to work. The Dodgers are ready to go. Let's check your Rico starting lineup for Grady Little and Los Angeles who's taken the first two games of this series. Rafael Furcal will lead it off the switch hitting shortstop Julio Lugo over from Tampa Bay bat second J.D. Drew in the number three spot. Olmedo signs great against lefties hits cleanup. Andre Ethier hits behind him and Wilson Bediment in his young career 375 against the Reds. Russell Martin will catch Jason Repko in center. And the future Hall of Famer Greg Maddox is on the mound. That's your Rico starting lineup. And here's the Reds lefty Eric Milton. Now don't you think that that fact that he's pitching against Greg Maddox Eric Milton that is is not lost on him. You always gear yourself up a little more when you face a competition such as Roger Clemens or Greg Maddox and hopefully Eric Milton with an extra day rest and a few extra minutes to warm up is going to have his good stuff tonight. Seven and six on the year with a 537 earned run average. Got decent control. He's got 64 strikeouts overall. Still gives up a lot of home runs and fly balls. Hour and five minute rain delay, but for Kyle doesn't waste any time. Banging the second pitch he sees into left field, and Rafael for Kyle continues to be a hot hitter. First game of this series, he had three hits. Second game of the series, he had one, and he gets one tonight. Here's the scouting report on Milton. Yeah, the left-hander will come right at you. He's got a four-seam fastball. Get it up to around 92 if he gets good and loose tonight. He's got a curve and a changeup. The changeup has been very important to him as of late. And of course, Eric Milton's on the mound, and you're playing the outfield. You will get some chances. Rick Honeycutt, the pitching coach, next to the future Hall of Famer Greg Maddox. So for Kyle, stretches his hitting streak on his. First at bat tonight. He's now got a 10 game streak showing Bud is Lugo. Not a sacrifice, but for a base hit, and it's fouled off. So it's strike one to Julio Lugo. J.D. Drew will follow. Lugo steps out, takes a look at Rich Donnelly, the Ohio native. Celebrating a birthday today. Rich Donnelly, 60 years young today. I was going to say 21. Well, yeah, he acts like he's 21 <laughs> sometimes. He even acts younger than that. Hi to Bubba and everybody back home. You better believe it. Roberta <laughs> watching tonight. They get us back up there in Steubenville. Hopedale Flash. Pretty good lead for Furcal. He's not going anywhere. This skied up into the mist. Here comes the first baseman, Hatterberg, under it. Got it. And he's retired. There's your fourth defensive alignment for the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds will go with Rich Aurelia, his second start at second base this season, first since the first month of the season. Hatterberg's at first. Clayton and Carnacion left side of the infield. Dunn, Griffey, and Friel in the outfield. And Javier Valentin's behind the plate. Valentin has pretty good numbers against Maddox. That's why he's starting. That's your fourth defensive alignment. So one on one out here's J.D. Drew drew two for eleven against Milton in this lefty lefty matchup. Left center field. Griffey over Dunn over Dunn holds on he got it. They looked at each other and Dunn finally stuck the left hand out and picked it off the turf before it plopped down for at least a double that may have scored a run. Well, there was a moment of suspense there. Dunn was pulled towards left center. Griffey was pulled towards right center and Dunn makes the catch and the good news is Chris no collision. Well the other good news is George and it was caught and it was really no more than a lazy fly ball but hit equidistant between the left fielder and the center fielder and you know whoever's going to get there in a good spot to make the catch either of them could have made it had they taken control of that ball but as it turns out no problem a fly ball J.D. Drew doesn't normally go that way but he ends up getting it out to Adam Dunn had a flag down a long way. You saw the two outfielders look at each other and finally Dunn stuck out the glove after peering at Griffey and then finding the ball again. So that could have been a big miscue here in the first. As it is, it's an out. Still at first is for Kyle. And here's Almedo signs. Well, maybe Junior saw a couple of replays of Adam <laughs> Dunn running over Damian Miller, didn't want to be that guy. It still hurts when you watch that. Here's signs 425 against lefties this year. That's why he's in the lineup tonight. Normally the number one pinch hitter for the Dodgers. He'll get a start now and again against the lefty. Here's a shot and boy has he got a start and made good on it. Way back in the lower deck. A home run for signs his ninth home run of the year and the Dodgers take an early two nothing lead. Sometimes numbers don't lie, and an Olmedo signs case 425 against lefties doesn't lie here. 
Uh, the other number that doesn't lie, and in this ballpark, and Eric Milton, and that's a combination where fly balls go a long way. That is home run number 20 given up by the Reds left-hander, and boy, he lays it right out there for him. This guy is some kind of fuerte right here. He is strong, doesn't get as much playing time as he would like, but he tears it up against lefties. So once again, Jerry Naren sees his Reds drop down early. The Dodgers scored four runs the last two nights early to take control of each ball game, and here they score two in the first. The last two nights, the runs have come in the third inning, four runs in each inning. So Milton back to work, bases cleared, and here's Andre Ethier, one of the early favorites in the rookie of the year balloting. He steps in at 343, 10 homers, and 42 knocked in on the season. Leads rookies with the average on base percentage and slugging percentage. Here's a shot to the right center field alley. A couple of bounces to the warning track. He gets by Griffey. He's going to turn second and head to third. He'll have his fourth triple of the season. So a homer and a triple following the Furcal base hit. And right away the Reds are trailing two to nothing, and there's another runner on third. Andre Ethier's got a pretty nice swing. We've seen that plenty in this short series already, but this is a breaking ball that just hangs right up there. You cannot throw, I don't care if the kid's an A ball, he should be able to hit that pitch right there. Just not enough snap in that breaking ball early on for Eric Milton, not finishing that pitch, and that's the reason you hang it up around the letters. So two away, and Ethier down at third, and here's the switch hitting Wilson Bedemit. Bedemit. Acquired the last week of July from the Braves in exchange for pitcher Danny Baez and infielder Willie Ibar and Cash. He's inserted in the lineup right away at third. Bateman in his career one for one against Eric Milton. I mean, none of the Dodgers have bodacious numbers against Milton. For Kyle, six for 30 and two homers, the best numbers against him. That slap to the right side and out of play. The Dodgers have taken the impetus every game of this series and taken early leads, and they do it again tonight. Two to nothing. Brady Little. First year as the Dodger manager trying to combine with Ned Coletti just as the Reds have with Jerry Naren and Wayne Kripsky to surprise some folks in the West just as the Reds have surprised folks in the Central. Just missing Dana DeMuth the crew chief saying that's a ball and it's three and two. Jim Joyce is your first base umpire. Paul Schreiber at second, and Doug Eddings is your third base umpire for tonight. They got him. Swing and a miss by Betamit, but the damage done. A two run home run by Olmedo Signs. Dodgers lead it by a score of 2 0. Here comes Ryan Friel. Chevy model year end event is here. Now's the time to get the best selection on a great lineup of 06 Chevys. So make your move. They're going fast. Plus, right now, qualified buyers can get 0% APR on almost every 06 Chevy. Claim yours before they're gone. Visit a participating Tri-State Chevy dealer and receive two complimentary Cincinnati Reds baseball tickets. Outcome for kids from around the world. Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Still no air. We're burning up in here, man. What are you doing? 
No, touch light. Agree? No touch. No touch! No touch light. When the situation calls for cold refreshment, call for Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Taste the cold. Well, no touch. I check your Rico starting lineup for Jerry Naren and the Reds. Ryan Friel leads it off. Scott Hatterberg moved up to the number two spot. Ken Griffey Jr. hits third. Then Adam Dunn, who has four homers against Maddox in his career. And guess what? So does Javier Valentin. Four career homers against Maddox. That's why he's in the lineup. Clayton hits eighth, and Milton, the pitcher, hits ninth. That's your Rico starting lineup. And here is the future Hall of Famer, Greg Maddox. And he's had 20 games, 21 wins against the Reds in his career, 9 and 11 on the year. And people say, boy, this is a terrible year for Greg Maddox. But well, guess what? He's got more wins than a whole lot of very good pitchers out there, including Roger Clemens, obviously, because he didn't sign till late. But Roy Oswalt, and you just start naming him up and down the line. Maddox, even in a bad year, there's a whole lot of teams out there where they like to have him in his rotation. Here's what he does. He's the master of movement, location, and defense. He can pick it out there on the mound and the front door fastball to left-handers. Here's Ryan Friel, who's had pretty good success against him. Seven for 21 and a homer. He's in at 302. Hatterberg and Griffey do to follow. Red's looking for production and ignition at the top of the lineup from Friel tonight. Slap foul to the right side and one change in Greg Maddox as you look at that delivery not wearing his customary number 31 and I mean, I've been waiting to see what would happen. He's been wearing 36 the last two days. He's always worn 31 31 of course belongs to Brad Penny and you wondered if he came out finally would he still be wearing 36 or would he be wearing 31 The answer is wearing 36 Friel bounces out it's a four to three put out. Friel retired. Here comes Hatterberg. Here comes your forward defensive alignment. For the Reds, their defense tonight, hopefully going to keep the Dodgers out of trouble. For the Dodgers, they've got a new look of their defense. Olmedo signs will be at first. 17th start at first base this season. Lugo at second. He's normally a shortstop. For college short, Betamid is over at third. The outfield, Ethier, Repco, and Drew. Repco's got some speed in center field. As Lofton with a left hander going sits. That's your forward defensive alignment, and here comes Hatterberg. 320 batting average for Hatterberg now leads the team. Since the All Star break, he's been on fire. 368. One hit in this series. That was his homer last night, his 10th of the year. 35 knocked in for Scott Hatterberg. Hatterberg, two for 13 and a homer against Maddox. That's funny, Chris. You. I mean, numbers to some players mean a lot. To some, they mean nothing. You know, I mean, you know, I asked Bronson Arroyo, why do you wear 61? He said, I don't know. They gave it to me, and I'll stick with it. It's no big deal. And other players, you remember Ken Griffey Jr. came here. He wanted 24. It was retired, of course, for Tony Perez. And he went to 30. His dad's number. Now he's wearing three. For Maddox, 31. Yep, he'd like to have it. He's not going to make a big stink about it. Though. I think at this stage in his career, he realizes it's not the number, but the guy inside the number. Mm hmm that makes the difference right there. Jerry Naren kind of flip flopping the lineup a little bit for the Reds tonight. Scott Hatterberg. This is just the third time all year long that Hatterberg has been batting in the number two spot. I find that somewhat interesting given the fact that he has led the Reds in on base percentage nearly all season long. And finally Naren gets him into that spot and he draws a walk. You and I projected when the year started that it might be a great spot for him because of his on base percentage and his comfort zone with it but especially when Felipe Lopez was here he was an ideal number two hitter. He was if he could get on base enough and Hatterberg is ideal number two but sometimes it's not only about the player you put in that spot it's what it does to other guys if you put Hatterberg number two where do you put Dunn early in the year he wasn't driving runs in like a middle of the order guy so you hopefully now that he's making more contact up until last night he'll be able to do that. Here comes Junior for his career 10 for 26 385 and two home runs against Greg Maddox. Overall Griffey 200 and 240 is his batting average 22 homers and 59 knocked in for the red center fielder. Last ball misses inside Junior continues to climb the all time list. Last night off Brad Penny home run number 558 for his career 160th homer is a red that ties him with Gus Bell for 11th on the all time list. 
There's a shot to left foul and out of play. Last night number 22 for Junior. He got a whole bunch of this one. Not all that bad of a pitch either by Brad Penny. A fastball down but it was about knee high middle in. And Junior hits those usually a long way. You get that ball down like that and you speed up the hitters bat slightly. Line to the left side again. And last night they pitched him away, 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 and he almost tied the game with a fly ball against the wall that Andre Ethier made a fine play on. Six game hitting streak for the red center fielder, trying to extend it tonight. Little by little, he's gotten. The wheels back rolling in the right direction after a bit of a hitting funk. And his dad's due in this week, so you know that that always pumps his average a little bit, too. It always does. You know, you may see this conversation quite a bit tonight. Russell Martin, a rookie catcher behind the plate, catching a first ballot Hall of Famer out there. He's pretty much going to defer to what Greg Maddox wants to do. And probably consult with him fairly often to make sure he's doing a good job. Uh, another pitch away and another pitch fouled off. One ball, two strikes. You remember that Greg Maddox, through the majority of his career, especially those years that he spent in a, an Atlanta Braves uniform, he always had a special catcher. And it wasn't always the number one catcher on the ball club. Eddie Perez, for many years, caught him down there. Paul Baco caught him in Atlanta. Neither of those guys were the frontline catcher, but they would be catching Greg Maddox every fifth day. Each of the you know we talk about pitchers getting better each of those catchers got better working with Maddox they too. They got more years of their pension too. Uh, speaking of number 31 look at the left corner of your screen there's Matt Belial who first came up in the Braves organization. Yep we're in number 31. He learned a lot from Maddox. Signs gloves it they'll get one at second on to first. Yep they turn to. Well Omedo signs is in there for his offense but he. Picks up a pretty good ground ball effort there. Turns the Griffey ground ball into two. Two nothing. We're going to the second. Hey, Mr. Opportunity again. And if you're seeing me, that can mean only one thing. It's Honda clearance time. Yep, and that means it's your opportunity to pick the Accord, Pilot, Odyssey, or any other Honda you desire for a deal that can only be described as irresistible. You know, kind of like me. The 2006 Honda clearance. Get APR financing as low as 2.9% on 2006 Honda trucks for well-qualified buyers. Oh, did I mention Honda is the most fuel-efficient auto company in America? I'm Mr. Opportunity. I'm back. And I'm knocking. Steroids can really damage your body. They can cause tendons to tear and bones to stop growing, damage kidneys, destroy the liver, even cause heart attacks and strokes. Not to mention something else they can do to a guy's body. Find out more about the dangers of using steroids. Visit drugfree.org. This is how we start on things. It's a quarter mile drag race, three out of five, and everything else in between there is negotiable. The deal is when you sign, you gotta have a car to hop at, brother. Three, three, four, oh, oh. five with the bottle? How about that? Oh. Now you're backing out with the oh. I came here to race, I didn't come here to get killed. Oh. Four and a half and we got a race. No! Take it, we have a race, do it. Fire them up! Lose the race, lose your ride. Pigs, exclusively on speed. Tonight's storylines on FSN Ohio are presented by Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Tonight's storylines presented by Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Stop the skid. Reds on a four-game losing streak and beat Maddox. Maddox this season against the Reds. 3-0 in three starts and a 3.18 earned run average for his career. He has 21 victories against Cincinnati. That's in now his 51st start against the Reds. There's Russell Martin the catcher Martin Repco Maddox do up seven eight and nine. Milton gave up a leadoff single to for Kyle then after getting two outs a homer to signs and a triple to Ethier in the first. Dodgers have had a great string of rookies of the year over the years. 
You remember the string during the 80s and this year they got two bona fide candidates. Andre Ethier jumps out at you because of his numbers but in terms of value to the club this guy's a rookie of the year candidate too. Boy you talk to Grady Little you talk to Rick Honeycutt. He's really been the complete player behind the plate. Well the pitching is 90 percent of your winning attitude in baseball. I mean catching has to be a large part of that as well and to put the responsibility of that on a young rookie catcher that takes a lot. Ethier was a guy that really came out of nowhere. They didn't expect a whole lot out of Andre Ethier this year. He has just surprised everybody and and played extremely well. They expected a little more out of Russell Martin but certainly not the kind of year that he's providing them. Two ninety three batting average this year already. And don't forget for every Reds run scored in today's game safe auto insurance company will donate fifty dollars to the Reds community fund one eight hundred safe auto encourages you to get home safe. That sneaks through into center field a base hit for Martin. You know sometimes you can scout a guy almost by body type and we waited around and watched. That young man Russ Martin take batting practice today and he's a solidly built young man he's not especially tall he's got short arms and those guys with short arms are very tough to get the ball inside on and that's what the Reds tried to do right here. They tried to jam him and if you don't get that ball in off the plate his arm span isn't that long his swing is just naturally short and he's able to get the barrel of the bat on the ball and drives it right back through the box. Here's Jason Repko. In at 296, three homers and 11 knocked in. Repko's had his share of injuries. He's missed 67 games. Came off the DL last week after a badly sprained ankle. Milton to the stretch. Martin off first. That's a fastball up high. Well, in the doubleheader today, Arizona beat the Cubs 10 to 2 in the first of two. Second game, Cubs came back to win it by a final of 7 to 3. So the Reds, at the end of the afternoon encounter, still have a half game lead over Arizona. Briefly, they were tied in the wild card with Arizona. Swing and a miss. Start of play tonight in the Central. The Reds three and a half games back of the Cardinals. Cardinals and Philly scoreless in the second inning at Bush Stadium. Two balls, one strike. Back to back change ups right there for Eric Milton. Those have been very important pitches for him. Even in the last game when he pitched against the Milwaukee Brewers he gave up a three spot in the first inning. Then he really buckled down and pitched very well holding the Brewers scoreless through the next six innings that he was in the ball game. But as the game went along his breaking ball got better and his feel for the change up got better. Two two. Three in a row. Way out in front of it, he pops it into short left. Back is Clayton. Royce under it, got it. Repco retired, and here comes Maddox. There was a time when that guy right there was 94 95 in Minnesota. Then the knee injury came, mechanics changed after the knee surgery and the rehab from it. And now, Chris. Maybe he didn't need the changeup. Maybe he didn't need his breaking ball as much back then in Minnesota. He needs it to be the complete pitcher now. No, there's no doubt about that, George. Not only that, you have to make sure that those pitches that you throw hit the spots that you want them to hit. I mean, when you're throwing 94, good, good, good example last night. Brad Penny, he was anywhere from 93 to 96 on his on the radar gun with his fastball. And so, if you leave the ball up occasionally and you're throwing 96. You know the guy's not going to center it all that much. They may foul a straight back. They may not be able to pull the trigger in time. But when your fastball is 88 and you're not hitting your spots, the guys are going to waylay all over you. And this is the adjustment that Eric Milton has had to make over the last few years. Strike one to Maddox, Sean Bunt again. He gets it down. Milton over. 
And they get the out. A successful sacrifice from Maddox. That's part of the package. He feels his position well. And he'll handle the bat well when you need it. So runner at second with two outs. And here's your Honda standings in the central. The Reds three and a half games back of St. Louis. Houston eight and Milwaukee eight back. Over in the West, the Dodgers start to play. Three games back of San Diego. Arizona a game back in second place. And in a wild card, yep, everybody's still very much alive. Arizona, after the split of the doubleheader, one half back. The Dodgers, after the two wins, are only three back, tied with Colorado. A whole host of folks still with hopes going into the last two months of the season. Sacrifice for Maddox, two away. Here's for Kyle, who singled and scored in the first on the homer by Sines. Took him a while to get comfortable. He said, I really was way out of sorts the first month of the season and finally got comfortable by the time he hit to May. Since May, he's hit over 300 and the average up to 282 after that base hit first time up. One of the handful of major impact leadoff hitters in the game of baseball. He's got power, he's got speed. When he's going right, the team will follow behind him. And it's no coincidence that. Since the Dodgers started playing better, he was playing better too. No coincidence, too, that the Braves have missed him. You're right about that. Who wouldn't? Marcus Giles moved up to the leadoff spot, and he told us he'd be just as happy to still be hitting second with Furcal in front of him. Hey, you know, some guys don't want to be the closer either. They would rather be the eighth inning guy instead of the ninth inning guy. And when you have a guy like Marcus Giles, very talented player, no doubt about it. You're going to get to see plenty of him this weekend when the Atlanta Braves come to town. But you lose for Cal, it's almost like having two leadoff men. Here in LA, they have three leadoff men when you've got for Cal and Lugo. And Kenny Lofton won two, three. Fastball in there, three and one. Martin after the base hit sacrificed to second by Maddox. Bounce down to second. Aurelia has it. That'll do it. A lead off hit. Nothing to show for it. 4 3 put out ends the inning. Here we go to the bottom of two. Dunn will lead it off. Dear Dr. Z, I know Daimler Chrysler invented the minivan, but how's the quality? Kim, check out our unique store and go on this Chrysler Town Country. Up. And it's five star crash test rated. But. Hey, look what I found. JD Power Award for the highest ranked van in initial quality. It's back. Employee pricing plus 0% financing. Get our employee price on most 2006 Chrysler vehicles. Here's to men. To guys who want to spend less time in the men's room and more time fishing. And here's to Flomax. It's approved to treat male urinary symptoms due to BPH, also called an enlarged prostate. In one week, Flomax may help symptoms like going often, going urgently, weak stream, frequently waking up at night to go. Ask your doctor if symptoms are from BPH, not prostate cancer. Common side effects of Flomax are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Upon standing, a sudden decrease in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. So when starting Flomax, avoid situations where injury could result. To learn more, call 866-4-FLOMAX. Ask your doctor. Flomax could make a difference in one week. Dear Dr. Z, my class is learning about the environment. What are you doing to help? Well, class, this Jeep Liberty Diesel gets 26 highway miles per gallon. And we're building a Flex Fuel Commander and Grand Cherokee. Plus, coming soon, the world's cleanest diesel. They're our cleanest 4x4s ever. It's a joke. Is that mustache real? It's back. Employee pricing plus 0% financing. Get our employee price on most 2006 Jeep vehicles. And the Reds and Meyer present the Meyer All-Star lineup at Great American Ballpark. Before selected weekend Reds home games, Meyer recognizes area students for their achievements in academics by inviting them to run onto the field and stand for the national anthem of the Reds player. These students qualified through their school's participation in Meyer's Community Rewards Program, program a part of Meyer's commitment to education. 
There's Adam Dunn to lead it off bottom of two against Maddox. A bouncer foul down the first baseline. Dunn, 212 in his career against Maddox. He's seven for 33, but four homers. Yep. Hit one out there. He hit one out there for number 32 in this series already. I don't think that guy's nearly deep enough. He's only in the second row out there. That's a nine iron shot for him, not a driver, huh? A half swing. <laughs> Since the All Star break, 369, he's hit safely in eight of his last ten. There's the one strike delivery. And that's a little changeup right there. Greg Maddox will throw any pitch to any portion of the plate. Normally, a pitcher will have a favorite spot for a right handed pitcher to a left handed hitter down and away with the changeup. And Maddox doesn't care. His, his control of the strike zone is so, so good that he can really go anytime, anywhere he wants to. And they're trying to pound him inside. It's interesting, George, because usually what you've seen over the last few years with the Cubs, especially, and Greg Maddox, they've been pitching Adam Dunn away. And that's a front door fastball. Dunn didn't think the first one was a strike. He didn't think that was a strike either, but it is a punch out, number one for Maddox. Well, we talked about it in our scatter report. It's a fastball that's a two seamer that has a little action on it. And that was all set up by the previous pitches. That had a little comeback action on it. We can call a little hair on that ball anyway. And he starts it inside. Looks like it's going to hit you in the belt buckle and comes right back over and hits the inside corner. So one away, and here comes Rich Aurelia. Aurelia has struggled against Maddox throughout his career. 195, 8 for 41, but he does have two homers. Really in at 286, 14 homers for the Reds, 41 knocked in, playing second base tonight. Six game hitting streak for Rich, trying to keep it alive here tonight. Final game of this series, Dodgers leave here, go to Florida, then head home after that. The Reds stay home and will play the Atlanta Braves. The Braves lost to the Pirates today, 3 to 2 in Pittsburgh. Bouncer down to third. Former Brave Wilson Bedeman has it. Two away, and here comes Edwin Encarnacion. Bedeman came up as a shortstop because of all the injuries to Chipper Jones. He's played a lot at third, but still can play short. He's a very valuable guy to have on your club, and he's matured a lot in the last two to three years. This is a Dodger team that's really been reworked, revamped. Changed around by new general manager Ned Coletti, and they're in contention. Here's Edwin, 281, seven homers, 43 knocked in, two for five against Maddox. Broken bat down to third, Betterman has it. Now, when he pitches, you get a lot of ground balls. He's got some tonight already. Red scoreless through two, and they trail two nothing. That's what I'm talking about. This is not a toy. You want to go again? Yes. <laughs> Bold moves. They happen every day. You witnessed the murder and didn't tell anybody. Eddie Kim will kill you. Come with us to L.A. Testify. Put him in jail for life. Welcome aboard, Agent Flynn. You know all those security scenarios we ran? Well, I'm smack in the middle of one we didn't think of. Eddie can't feel the blame with poisonous snakes. Please help me! On a crisis team at LAX, ASAP. Let's go! Snakes on a plane. This film is not yet rated. It starts August 18th. T-Mobile announces our most whenever minutes ever. Is 1,500 enough for the biggest talkers? Let's find out. You can't break up with me. Everyone would know you're not conceited. You are just honest. I think maybe our cheerleading squad should boycott Tuna for a while. I was going to be the only one with the white swimsuit, and then she had it too. <sighs> Can I, like, get a new battery? What? You got your head stuck in the center? If that's so not good. I love chewing gum. It's like, whatever. And I was like, whatever. And Introducing like, what? our most whenever minutes ever. 1,500 minutes, just $39.99. T-Mobile. Go ahead. Talk it up. 
You're watching FSN. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Cincinnati Reds and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Eric Milton ready to go to the top of three. Julio Lugo will lead it off. J.D. Drew and Olmedo Sines will follow. Two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. A big two-run home run by Sines, the difference. Here's the wiry former shortstop, now a second baseman, and it figures that's where he'll be playing. Remember the Dodgers still have two key players around the infield that are on the disabled list now. Jeff Kent. And no more Garcia Parra. No more. Hopefully he'll be back next week. They hope to get him back as early as Tuesday. And he's had a comeback player of the year kind of year. And Kent, you get his bat back in the lineup. They're going to have a tough time getting at bats for everybody. Yeah, really, that's the only problem that they're going to have, George, with that kind of lineup. They're going to have a problem getting enough people in the lineup on a regular basis. And there's certain people that you just mentioned, if they don't get regular at bats, they might not be very happy. There's J.K. right there. Well, I guess if you can live through that type of pressure in Boston where they had a surplus of talent there, Brady Little can figure out a way to do it in L.A. And in race is what they're all concentrating on. That's a foul ball past third. One ball, two strikes. Speaking of the Red Sox, Grady Little's former team. And remember, when Grady Little was in Boston, his bench coach was Jerry Naren. They became fast friends, number one. Number two, they became inseparable from a baseball perspective. Swing and a miss. Lugo's retired. That's strikeout number two for Eric Milton. And here comes J.D. Drew. A reminder, tomorrow night, get a look around the major leagues with FSN's baseball reports, covering every team all season long with highlights, interviews, and analysis you won't get anywhere else. FSN's baseball report tomorrow at 6 right here on FSN Ohio. I asked Grady Little when he got the job in Los Angeles that if things had been different, meaning if Jerry Naren had not gotten the job here in Cincinnati, would he have been on his staff? He said he would have been the first guy I would have called. He said he he would have been my bench coach if he was free or available. And they still are very close personally and professionally. Drew sends it to left. Here comes Dunn calling everybody off. He's got it to away. A little better look around the second time. Jerry Aaron's probably making a note of that himself, saying that the breaking ball from Eric Milton much better this time around here in the third inning than it was in the first inning when the Dodgers kind of jumped all over him a few times. He was a little lazy with the breaking ball. He seems to be finishing it off now. Once a catcher, always a catcher. That's what Jerry Aaron <laughs> was. You always make those notes as a catcher. In fact, it was 1979 on this date that Jerry Aaron was the catcher to take the field for the Yankees on the day after Thurman Munson was killed in his plane crash. One of the saddest days I ever spent at a ballpark. Bucky Dent and I were reminiscing about that the last couple of days. That was a day after Thurman died in his plane crash at Yankee Stadium. They went out on the field with no one behind home plate at the start of warmups. And a moment of silence and then Jerry was the catcher. For the Yankees that night. It ended the career of Thurman Munson, but his legacy and what he meant to the Yankee tradition never died. And it started really one of the most remarkable runs of a person that we've known since then, and that's Thurman's wife, Diana. The three kids, she did a remarkable job. She's been such a great boost to other women who have gone through similar difficulties over the years. And the kids have just come out wonderfully. Two balls, one strike. Sneaks that one in. That's where he wanted the one to signs. Not quite over the plate. He got it in on Almeida. It's 2-2. Two well, -two. Almeida, as you mentioned early, George, a 425 hitter this year against left-handers. And that's way above his career average against lefties. He's right, he's got better. Numbers against lefties and righties, no doubt, but around 290 normally throughout his career against left handers. But he is waylaying southpaws this year. 
high in the air into right center field. Here comes Friel calling off Aurelia. He's got it. Now Maddox, a ground ball pitcher. That guy, a fly ball pitcher. He gets two fly balls in the third. We're going to the bottom of three. The Chevy Model Year End event is here. Now's the time to get the best selection on a great lineup of 06 Chevys. So make your move. They're going fast. Plus, right now, qualified buyers can get 0% APR on almost every 06 Chevy. Claim yours before they're gone. Visit a participating Tri-State Chevy dealer and receive two complimentary Cincinnati Reds baseball tickets. Yeah, having a little car trouble. I'm State Farm Agent Larry Bitterman, and this is a true story. I was there on vacation, so I called the local State Farm Agent. We're not really sure how the car got into the lake. Yeah, the map was a disappointment. They called a local diver, and it turns out that's me too. I think he started my claim before it even dried off. And we settled it the next day. Where would I have been without him? Sunk. Any insurance company can promise you a good price, but nobody takes care of you like State Farm. We'd love to prove it to you. Call an agent today. Like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. At McCluskey Chevrolet, loyal customers just keep coming back. I have been getting cars at McCluskey since I was 16, and during this time I've had six different cars. All along, it's just been a great experience. I, I came here as well, and the process was the same for me. It was uh, just a very helpful environment, and it was just an overall good experience. So it's just a great place. Um, they care a lot about the customer. I don't think that either one of us will ever go anywhere else. Grippo's Master Chip Theater presents Snack Track 2. He's dead, Jim. The Wrath of Corn. Still alive, old friend. Still. Old friend. Car -core. Go ahead, play with your food. <laughs> hey, Reds fans, rise up and rally your team to victory as they host the Braves on Friday. Holiday Inn, the official hotel of Major League Baseball, and your Reds stepping up to help by giving the first 20,000 fans in attendance a free Reds rally towel. Have lots of fun. Join the Reds. Purchase tickets for the Holiday Inn Rally Towel Night. That's Friday by logging on to Reds.com. Back to work. Go the men from Cincinnati. Here's Javier Valentin. A 4-12 career average. 7 for 17 and 4 home runs against Mr. Maddox. He leads it off. Bottom of 3. How about these numbers, Chris? Not bad. You know what? When you've got a Hall of Famer on the mound and you've got an, a batting average up over 400 against him. Brett Tomko, really only. Josh Fogg, and Tomo Oka. How about that? <laughs> that shows you what kind of category you're in. Or does it? I do remember years ago when Maddox was with the Atlanta Braves there was, and he was really dealing against the Reds in those days and everybody else for that matter. But Benito Santiago was one guy that used to be able to really hit him well. And not only hit him well, but always hit him for home runs. And sure enough, it was Benito Santiago that a couple of games in the seasons that I remember hit with three run homers, and those are the only runs they would ever get off of Maddox. Odd how that works. One ball, two strikes. Fast ball up and in, 2 2. So who's got the bragging rights there? Toma Oka and Brett. How about that? Huh? Or, or Javi Valentin? <laughs> That's up and away. It's full. Three balls, two strikes. So Valentin's been the odd man out. First, David Ross caught fire. Then LaRue came back, and Javi's been trying to grab every start and every at bat he could. Only 130 at bats for him on the year. There's a strikeout, number one for. Valentin on the night, number two for Maddox on the night, and here comes Clayton. Hey, tonight on the Best Sports Show period presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, counting down the top 50 outrageous moments in sports history, from beer fuel mayhem to a hatchet man named Gil Hooley. See where your favorite outrageous moment ranks tonight on the Best Sports Show period on FSN. Here's Clayton Royce at 265. Uh, Homer 33 knocked in. Finally got a one under that HR sign. First Homer in over a year. It came last night. 
Ah, uh, let's relive it, Chris. Yeah, uh, he got a little breaking ball right there and went right down to get it. Good battling at bat for Royce Clayton. Doesn't hit many of those. More than a year between bombs. Other than that, the last few nights he's been playing pretty much pepper with the shortstop. Now let's think positive. He hasn't homered in consecutive games since 2002. Wouldn't it be nice? If you're going to do it, this is the place to do it. Mm hmm. He spent the last couple of days with some extra batting practice looking over video with Chris Chambliss the hitting instructor trying to get his swing right again. And Greg Maddox has given up some long balls this year. 14 of them and you have a little drop in velocity you don't get away with the mistakes that you normally get away with. And Maddox was never an overpowering pitcher but I do remember facing him in the minor leagues and he had quite an arm. Guy was drafted in the second round of the 1984 draft. So in back to back years the Reds missed an opportunity to get <laughs> Roger Clemens and Greg Maddox. Uh, revisionist history. That's a walk to Clayton Royce takes the walk. Now you do know who the Reds picked in 1984. <laughs> the unforgettable Pat Basillo. That's it. Actually there wasn't much in that draft. Jay Bell was taken in that draft. Here's Eric Milton got a home run. For the Big E, a pretty good college player. There goes Clayton trying to show a bunt is Milton. It's fouled off and we'll try it again. He's a pretty good high school hitter, pretty good college hitter at Maryland, and the two home runs last year show you how he can swing the bat. Well, last night it was Brad Penny who tried to sacrifice. They took the bunt off and he doubled in a run. So let's see if maybe the Reds can turn one around this time too. Strike one to Milton. Mark Berry wants to make sure they're all on the same page so he trots down to the home plate area and he'll roll through signs one more time. Uh oh shows bunt four six yes sir three Jim Joyce saying they did get him at first so no bunt, no sacrifice. DP the answer. Dodgers lead at 2 nothing. Make your hard earned dollar go a whole lot farther. Get ready. Advance Auto Parts has the low prices guaranteed to save you money. Get ready to get the best price possible on all the parts and accessories you need with our ready to go low price guarantee. Nobody can beat our prices on just about anything for your car. So when you want to get more for your money while getting more out of your car, get to Advance Auto Parts for our everyday ready to go low price guarantee. Ready and advance. JTM original quarter pound hamburgers. Cincinnati Reds baseball on FSN being brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota moving you forward. By Advance Auto Parts, providing car care know how to protect your investment. We're ready in advance. By Rico, move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. And by your local Jeep dealers, hurry to your Jeep dealer. See how good the best values in America can be. Almedo signs two run homer in the first Dodgers lead the Reds two nothing. Here we go to the top of. Inning number four with Andre Ethier Bediment and Martin do up. Great to have you with us George Grant Chris Welch if you joined us late wonder why we're only in the fourth an hour and five minute waiting for rain delay. 
like waiting for Godot, huh? <laughs> Never came. Never did. But we're but playing baseball. There might be another chance later <laughs> in the evening. <laughs> That's the bad news. Our local weather prognosticator Chris Welch checking the radar and it's it's around but well, hopefully you, we'll get you it. Know, the only way I can really tell there's something around is when Doug Gallant goes out and talks to the home plate umpire Dana DeMuth between innings and that little huddle usually isn't about mm -hmm. what kind of dinner do you want after the ball game it's guess what's coming red stuff on the radar. They had a bunch of storms that looked like they'd move in around 10 o'clock Eastern time and that's what they're looking over their shoulder at now. Here's Ethier tripled in the first but was left stranded. And don't forget you can win twenty thousand dollars on the spot or two thousand dollars a month for an entire year this Sunday at Grand Victoria Casino and Rising Sun restrictions do apply. See the casino for rules. Phillies a lead again against the Cardinals. Three nothing in the third inning and yes we have it confirmed. Chase Utley a base hit. They debated all night long last night whether his first hit was a hit or would it be an error or a fielder's choice. Finally he made it. Worthless of a debate because he got to hit his second his last time up late in the ball game. So it's 35 straight now for Chase Utley. Affleck. Here's your Aflac trivia question for tonight on Monday. Greg Maddox became the fifth pitcher with 300 wins to be traded in midseason. Who are the other four? Answer coming up for you. So Ethier's two for two, and here's Bedevin who struck out first time up. I mean, they're trying. If you weren't with us last night, we were looking at the Phillies schedule and the red schedule, and depending on how things fall, there is a real possibility that Chase Utley could go for the National League record held by Pete Rose when the Reds play the Phillies in Philadelphia. A little early to think of it now, but there is a possibility that could occur, which would be kind of neat. Runner not going this slap to the other way and it's so and two. Let's hope there's more on the line than a hitting streak. Mm -hmm. now we got one of the best in the business and Glenn Sample is an official scorer but imagine in the middle of a streak like that if you have a controversial play and it becomes the focal point of a streak and that's what it was looking like last night until finally. He ended up getting a second hit later in the ball game. No balls, two strikes. Hit pretty good, left center field. Griffey going over. Will he get there? Yes, he will. Heath here all the way to second, retreats and heads to first. Hung up there just long enough for the Reds. Gold Glove center fielder to track it down. I think the ball carried a little bit further than Junior thought it would at first, also. Betterman on an 0-2 pitch gets a, a ball that he can hit pretty well and Junior tracks it down the gap. One out one on and here's Martin who singled the center first time up. There goes the runner pitch out. They got a shot at him in the dirt, but the tag slapped on. Does he hold on? Yes, he does. The Reds guessed right. Martin tried to find a way to get the bat on the ball, couldn't do it. Valentin's throw to Clayton erases the runner, and there's your second out. Good job of guesswork by the Reds. Well, is it guesswork or is it a little more than in just intuition? Remember that Jerry Naren and Grady. Little have been together in the past a lot and Jerry Naren is one of the best around as far as picking up signs from the other team and I'm wondering if maybe he knew something was up right there. Maybe it was a little different sign that Rich Donnelly gave at third base. Maybe it was just a, a different way that Ethier who has only had four stolen bases on the year now been thrown out five uh, took a lead. Nonetheless they guessed right and did a good job executing the play. That kid can hit. Jammed his hand getting back in appears to be okay though. The base runner erased two away. 
And Martin still at the plate. There's the two one. Two balls, two strikes. Now maybe that's the kind of a play that might be able to ignite this ball club, Chris. You know, you look for something like that, something little to kind of turn the tide after two nights where the Dodgers have really had most of the impetus each night. Yeah, you know, especially last night, George, it was a long game, somewhat kind of a boring game if you want to call baseball ever boring. But, you know, the three runs the Reds score were solo shots. And so many times a solo home run can be a rally killer. You almost rather see a guy hit a triple. And then put the pitcher in kind of a tense situation rather than he gets a brand new baseball and he goes back to the full windup. It's a lot harder pitching with a guy on second base than it is with nobody on base, even if there's going to be a run scored. Ask any pitcher any time, how would you rather give up a run? And they'll say, a solo homer, please. Two balls, two strikes. Clayton can't get it. It's in the left. A base hit for Martin. He's now two for two. Now he's two for two really on the same pitch each time and on the same count. Got a 2 2 breaking ball his first time up. Lined it to center field that time on a 2 2 count. Got another breaking ball and got it in that five and a half hole between third base and short. Here's Repco steps in at 293 popped to short first time up on another 2 2 pitch. Grady Little in the American League didn't run a lot of course because he had a power hitting Red Sox team through the minor leagues he believed in the running game and he believes in it again this year. The Dodgers have been one of the leaders in stolen bases all year long. They're right behind the Reds, fourth in the league. But he'll run at opportune times and at inopportune times. He'll run with people you don't expect to run, so you got to be concerned and wary of it, especially in close ball games. Martin started to go, then slammed on the brakes and heads back to first. You know, it's one thing about having a manager's philosophy on the running game. It's another thing about maybe the division in the National League West has catchers out there that really don't throw very well. You know, when Mike Piazza is behind the plate in San Diego, that's certainly the case out there. But, uh, you know, it's also can you tailor your game against your competition? One ball, one strike. That's the one key ingredient that Jason LaRue behind the plate gives you that neither of the other catchers give you quite as well. LaRue has a little better arm a quicker release and and you're less likely to try to push the running game as an opposing manager against the Reds when LaRue's behind the plate. The Reds catcher Jason LaRue sitting tonight at the start of this when he pinch hit last night. Broken bat, it is foul past third down the line. Uh, catching so critical, especially in a pennant race. And now Grady Little said it about as well as you could before the game, sitting around talking today, referring to the Red Sox, the team he used to manage. He said, I don't care what the Red Sox try to do, there's no way they can replace Jason Veritek at this start of the season because Jason Veritek is one of the impact catchers of the game not just behind the plate but in the clubhouse as a leader and as a captain and the Red Sox have now the rumors are that they're shopping around for a catcher right now. Obviously with Veritek out the same thing that Jason LaRue had cartilage mm -hmm. damage and arthroscopic surgery could be gone for two months. One ball two strikes. But how do you replace a guy that important to be like the Reds losing to Johnny Bench you know or at this stage of a season in a pennant race Doug Mirabelli the backup catcher and ironically for them it came one day after the trade deadline mm -hmm. here's the one and two dribbled in front of the plate it hits him he's got to be out yes he was out of the batter's box Redco kicked the ball after he was a step out of the box so he's retired 
And the Reds get a break with the caught stealing the base hit and the base runner erased. The Hyundai Challenge is on. Now is the best time to save thousands on the smart-sized Hyundai Santa Fe. Winner of Auto Pacific's best-in-class for vehicle satisfaction. It beat all other mid-size SUVs, including Ford Escape and Chevy Equinox. And it comes with America's best warranty. Rethink your next SUV and save big on Santa Fe at the Hyundai Challenge Summer Clearance. Get to your Hyundai dealer today for up to $4,000 cash back on Santa Fe. Get a new Santa Fe with up to $4,000 cash back or 0% APR for 60 months. Offer ends August 31st. The Super 16 of Poker face off in a star-studded duel for over $1.2 million. Yes! Poker Superstars 3, Sunday on FSN. This month. I can't prove this, but I didn't kill her! Acclaimed producer Jerry Bruckheimer. As your lawyers, we want a trial. Shows you the art and science of high-profile defense law. We did some surveillance. Too smart, too analytical. This guy's bad for us. Where it's justice. Get rid of him. At any price. If you miss anything, it could cost our client everything. I am not going to let them convict you for something you didn't do. If you got the right lawyer with you, we've got the greatest legal system in the world. Justice series premiere this month on Fox. You're watching Reds Baseball on FSN Ohio. Affleck! Time for our Affleck trivia answer. First four pitchers with 300 plus wins to be traded in midseason. Maddox this year, Christy Matheson, Tom Seaver, Steve Carlton, and Nuxi Phil Necro. 300 wins traded. Hall of Famers, all. Comes Ryan Friel, bounce to second, first time up. No doubt, Chris, that Greg Maddox, when he is eligible, five years after he retires, he'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Do you think his former teammate, Tom Glavin, will get in first oh, ballot? Without a doubt. I, I think there really ought to be an exception for certain guys, George, that yep. maybe the year after they retire, <laughs> maybe to keep them from coming back. Uh, like Roger Clemens. I mean, Clemens ought to be a first time Hall of Famer the day after he retires, the same way with Greg Maddox. And yes, to your question about Glavin, no doubter. As yep. far as my book, anyway, Hall of Famer. I agree, too. It's a liner right at Bedimit. Friel's retired, one away. Hey, Pepsi, it's a preferred drink. Proud sponsor of the Cincinnati Reds, a team of tradition. Pepsi, it's the Cola. In fact, former Dodger manager Tommy Lasorda, remember, was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Then there were rumors that he might come back, which would be interesting because. No Hall of Famers ever come back. Jim Palmer, remember, talked about a, a comeback trail, trying to come back. He would have been the first. Didn't happen. But and on, if somebody came up to Tommy Lasorda tomorrow and gave him a chance to manage in the major leagues, I think he'd take it. That's how so? much he loves Even managing. Even if it wasn't Dodger Blue. Yeah, I think so. I don't think it's going to happen, but uh, that's how much he loves managing. Here's Hatterberg walk first time up, and as we come to the fourth inning the Reds have two base runners both via the walk Hatterberg in the first and Clayton in the third. Now one thing Greg Maddox does as well as anybody maybe at least in our generation of me watching baseball is he senses when a hitter begins to pull off a pitch and then he's able to pull the string just a little bit more and more. So if you're any type of a pull hitter against Greg Maddox he knows immediately how he's going to pitch you he's going to give you a, a one look inside had maybe a fastball get you thinking that he might come back inside and then go back out of way. He's done that very effectively tonight against the lefties in the lineup. Good example was the first time against Ken Griffey Jr. Two balls, one strike to Hatterberg. That's inside three and one. Adam Dunn had a brilliant month of July. He had 354. Hatterberg even better. He led the National League, hitting 425 for the month. And he now leads the Reds with a 320 average. 
And he works his second walk. Here's our Aflac trivia question follow up. Pitchers who had 300 wins and traded in midseason. Seaver from the White Sox to the Red Sox in 1986. Carlton from Cleveland to the Twins in 87. And Necro from the Indians to the Blue Jays also in 87. Now the real follow up that I love to see from this George is what did these five pitchers do who had already had 300 wins when they were traded midseason. What did they do after the trade. Was it a trade that's worth it. That's a dribbler down the third baseline Maddox picks throws and gets Griffey. That's why he's a gold glover that's a similar ball that Griffey hit the other day that he legged out for a base hit but Maddox comes off his delivery in perfect fielding position and he makes this look easy. Well he's got a cubby of gold gloves hanging around somewhere Greg Maddox does maybe up there on the mantle or in the closet with his four Cy Young Awards but he comes and does that as fundamentally correct as you possibly can do it. Eyed the ball right with his bare hand didn't try to pick it up while he's looking at first base got down low and threw the ball from a kind of a low position didn't stand back up and then make a move to first base. So he gets one of the big lefties Griffey now he's got to face the other one Dunn struck out his first time up. So the runner goes to second Hatterberg and tying run at the plate is done. Change up swing and a miss for strike one Dunn struck out looking first time up. That's five in a row by my count with Adam Dunn having gone back to the day before but he struck out four times last night. That's a golden sombrero. Hey Big Poppy struck out four times last night too so even the best do. All it takes is one swing of the bat and they'll forget that. Here's a look at the home run that Dunn hit off Maddox back in May. The fourth he hit off him in his career, and that's a shot the other way. Yeah, and how many home runs has Adam Dunn hit offage this year? I mean, he's hit a few to dead center field, no doubt, but that one is as far to the left field, except one of those slicing deals that he goes right behind the, the foul line down the left field line, but he does not usually drive the ball that way. Bouncer down to second. Lugo has it, and that'll do it. So the Reds get a runner as far as second. Nothing to show for it. Still no hits, and they trail 2 nothing. Not too close. What do you think? I got that insurance? What insurance is that, Yogi? I'm ah! The one you really need to have. Ah! If you don't have it, that's why you need it. Need what? I'm flat. Well, if you get hurt and miss work, it won't hurt to miss work. Uh -huh. And they give you cash, which is just as good as money. Aflac. Ask about it at work. We'd like to welcome you aboard Flight 121. Enjoy your flight. Welcome aboard, Agent Flynn. At 30,000 feet. Did you guys hear that? When terror strikes. Oh, my God. One man will strike back. Everybody move forward! Samuel L. Jackson. It's my job to handle life and death situations, and I'm very good at it. Snakes on a plane. One, two, three! That's what I'm talking about. This film is not yet rated. Starts August 18th. The best damn sports show, period. Come on in and be our guest for Sports Television's Nightly Party. The best damn sports show, period. Weeknights on FSN. Head to Buffalo Wild Wings for their award-winning wings, spun in one of 12 signature sauces. Best damn sports show period. Weeknights on FSN. Reds baseball on FSN being brought to you by your local Ford store. By JTM. More of what you're hungry for. By the Ohio Lottery. Last year, Ohio Lottery tickets helped support Ohio public schools with over $645 million. And by Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Change the outcome. Reset the story of this one for you. The Dodgers two runs, six hits, no errors. Omedo signs a two-run homer. The Reds walks but no hits. Two walks to Hatterberg, a walk to Clayton, the only base runner Cincinnati has had so far against Greg Maddox. Here's Milton going to work. First pitch, swinging into right center. There's Griffey. 
Under it. Got it. And Maddox is retired for the first out of the fifth inning. All right, George. Maddox has been around 20 years. Last time up, he laid down a sacrifice bunt. His fourth sack of the season. How many do you think he's got for his whole career? How about 162? Now 163. And you talk about little things, those little sacrifices for the Braves during that big run during the 90s meant a lot. You better man. believe it. Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz, all of them contributed with key hits and key sacrifices. And everybody else that came through there. I mean, you talk about Ken Merker talks often about it when he first came up. And Merker was a pretty good high school player too, and you know, could could swing the bat a little bit. There's a pop up into short center field. Who'll take charge? Clayton does. But they made it clear that playing defense was important, and they also made it clear that getting bunts down was important. Hey, get your need for speed from the Meyer Kentucky Speedway Racing Report. Join Jim Day and Tim Bray for a comprehensive half hour focused on the Kentucky Speedway and area motorsports. It's the Meyer Kentucky Speedway Racing Report Sunday at noon here on FSN. So for Kyle pops out two away and here comes Lugo. Milton could go for an easy one two three couldn't he. Lugo popped out struck out 0 for 2. Bottom of four now in St. Louis Philly three Cardinals nothing. The Reds have stumbled yes but so have the Cardinals so the Reds still three and a half back of St. Louis in the central. Bouncer right back to Milton. He'll like this inning one two three. On to the bottom of five. Rich trying to do some business. Rich really will try to stretch his six game hitting streak. Now that's what I'm talking about. This is not a toy. You want to go again? Yes. <laughs> Bold moves. They happen every day. In these shark infested waters, a team of scientists and one brave volunteer are about to find the answer to an important question. Is Diet Mountain Dew as much of a thrill as regular Dew? were clear. Diet Mountain Dew is all the Dew with none of the calories. This is the ticket that launched a thousand trips last year, built homes, and let a lot of people have some fun with over a billion dollars in winnings. It's the ticket that helps support Ohio public schools with over $645 million. It's also the ticket that helps support almost 9,000 Ohio Lottery retailers with over $133 million. We're the Ohio Lottery, and every day, this ticket helps Ohio in millions of ways. Grippo's Master Chip Theater presents Fish. Nah, nah. And chips. You're gonna need a bigger bowl. Go ahead. Hey, with your food. Hey Reds fans get MLB.com game day audio listen to every single Reds game live right from your computer sign up exclusively at Reds.com. Here's Maddox back to work facing Aurelio bounce to third first time up. Aurelia Encarnacion Valentin do up. Two runs six hits for the Dodgers. The Reds whitewash so far. Rish, you asked the question, and Rish Polk will give you the answer of our follow-up. Those 300-win pitchers traded in midseason. 
Seaver to Boston. How did he do? Five and seven with a 3.8 earned run average in 86. That's about the only one you want because Steve Carlton was one and five, so you forget him. Phil Necro 0 and two. Christy Mathewson only made one start, so you got to figure that uh, maybe it's not such a good idea to trade for a 300 game winner, at least based on past history. And in that 86 year I remember it Seaver eventually went on the disabled list and John McNamara was waiting and waiting and waiting for him to come back hopeful that he could come back and give him a boost down the stretch run he never did. Might that have made a difference you think in 86 when the Red Sox lost eventually to the Mets in the World Series. Had to believe it would. Yeah. We could only roll the clock back to 1986. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes. I remember visiting John McNamara early that year, and, and I, I mean, he was, we all loved him. He was a manager here in Cincinnati, and I said, "Who do you think you can pick up that'll help you in the second half?" And he slyly wrote a number and circled it on a sheet of paper. Here's the three-two. There's a bouncer down to third. Bet him it has it. Over to first, really is retired. That number was 41. This is before the deal was ever made. So he had his eyes on Tom Seaver way back at the beginning of the season, hopeful that maybe he could get him into Boston before the year was over. Nice play by Benamit. One away, and here comes Encarnacion. They enter the Tri State Chevy Dealers Great American Ballpark Experience. 20 lucky winners will be chosen to show off their skills on the Reds home field take home an authentic jersey much much more once in a lifetime chance to play like the pros visit www.trychevy.com to enter registration ends August 31st. The Dodgers leave town Braves come in for the weekend series we get our only look at Atlanta here in Cincinnati the Braves still in the pennant chase too and then of course. The Cardinals come to town. The Reds have seven left against St. Louis, and it'll come with in a week. And by the way, don't forget the Reds are offering tickets for half price in 10 seating locations for Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday against the Cardinals next week. There's a shot to left, but it's right at the left fielder, Ethier. Best hit ball for the Reds so far tonight. Two away, and here comes Javier Valentin. Our down on the farm report from Louisville lost six to four last night against Columbus and in Dayton won eight to two last night at Beloit. B.J. Szymanski continues red hot two for five a homer 14 on the year now and three knocked in. Our down on the farm report sponsored by Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Hit pretty good. Could this be gone? Way back to the wall, against the wall, and caught. Valentin bidding for his fifth home run against Maddox gave it a big time ride, but JD Drew caught up with it one step from the wall. Another look at a big swing and a big catch by JD Drew. Still 2 0 Dodgers. Direct TV today. We have a home here, something we think is worth defending. Why is that so tough to understand? Presenting Friday Night Triple Play, your favorite movies three times in a row every Friday night. We are here whenever you're ready to watch. Uncut. Uncensored. Don't shoot me! Commercial free. In its original widescreen format, the way Fox Movie Channel likes it. It's beautiful, man! Friday night triple play starting at 10 p.m. Eastern 7 Pacific only on Fox Movie Channel. 
You're watching FSN. Reds Baseball on FSN being brought to you by Chevrolet. Visit TryChevy.com for outstanding values on America's number one value. Yes, done. By State Farm, great service, great rates. You'll, you can get it all from State Farm. By Domino's, get the thin crust special. Enjoy two medium, two topping thin crust pizzas for only $6 each. Call Domino's now. And by your local Honda dealers. Visit MyCincinnatiHondaDealer.com for your best Honda buy. Javier Valentin gave the Reds fans something to stand up and get excited about but J.D. Drew makes a nice catch 370 feet away and the Reds are still scoreless. Here's Milton back to work. He'll face Drew. Signs and then Ethier. By the way, don't forget the inaugural Cincinnati Walks for Kids on November the 4th will celebrate patients of Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Enjoy a fun-filled day while raising funds to help support sick kids. Register at CincinnatiChildrens.org slash walk. Breaking ball misses. Really Chris two good starts back to back for Eric Milton as we go into the six he got off to a rocky start in Milwaukee but then settled down and here he gave up two in the first and he settled down again. Well, you know really what it shows George is his ability to make some adjustments during the ball game, and that's what you really love to see and in both cases it's been improvements in the breaking ball and the change up. In fact there's a couple of batters in this Dodger lineup that he has thrown really nothing but breaking balls and change ups too. It was Almeida signs that really hurt him. That was back in the first inning when he hit an 0 1 fastball for a home run. And we'll see if he can handle him again. He handled him last time up, a fly ball to right. So here's signs, the homer, and the fly ball out. Signs one for two. Signs a big key to this Dodger bench. And against left handers he's a big key to the lineup he's in there tonight. Change up swing and a miss. And it's no balls and two strikes. Hey last year Ohio lottery tickets helped a lot of people have fun with over a billion dollars in prizes won. Every day Ohio lottery tickets help Ohioans in millions of ways. Some guys, Chris, you just lab label uh, professional hitter. This is one of those guys. You, you know what? Especially when you're a left-handed pitcher out <laughs> yeah. there, he, he gives you the feeling that he's got the plate covered. And if you're going to go in there, you better get way in there. And that's really what you have to try to do as a pitcher is you try to make him aware of the inside part of the plate, which is threading the needle. And then you go outside. And if you're Eric Milton, you're thinking, well, I got to go outside, not necessarily with fastballs, because signs can drive the ball. I've got to hope that he pulls off the ball a little bit. He hit his home run the left field and I want to make sure that if he's thinking at all about trying to drive the ball maybe pulls the ball off just a little bit and I throw a little change up out there and get him out ahead of it. He'll giddy up on that fastball up high and out of the strike zone he gets signs a punch out two away. Well signs is an aggressive hitter he's only walked seven times all year long against thirty nine strikeouts so he's a guy up there to swing the bat not not take a base on balls and you know that's old Eric Milton right there. When he needs to add a little bit to the fastball he goes up and signs buys the bait. A two away and here's Ethier a triple and a single two for two. Breaking ball misses ball one. year ago Ethier year was tearing up the Texas League which is double A mm -hmm. traded in the offseason in the Milton Bradley deal and now he's swinging it pretty good in the National League done warning track looking up he'll haul it in 
One two three for the Reds and Eric Milton Reds go back to work bottom of six Clayton do up. Dear Dr. Z are Dodge trucks more than just Hemis. The new Dodge Ram has a new frame for improved ride and handling and Dodge Durango has an electronic stability program and technology we invented. What would you expect from the world's largest producer of commercial vehicles. Kirk! You forgot Hemi with fuel saving MDS. Sorry. Actors. It's back. Employee pricing plus 0% financing. Get our employee price on most 2006 Dodge vehicles. Stan, you're looking at a man who's on his way to the top. You've been riding the elevator again, Jerry? I'm the go-to guy, Stan. You mean the guy that goes straight to the Rico printer? Mr. Clutch. Way to get ahead, Jerry. Move your ideas forward with Rico Dependability. I keep it in my bedroom. Here it is, my White Castle freezer. Here's where I keep the sliders, jalapeno cheeseburgers, flavored chicken rings. They're new. I figure they're good to have around in case there's another Y2K, or if I get hungry later. White Castle's new flavored chicken rings, seasoned with ranch or Tabasco. My kids grew up on them. On TV, Jack Bauer has 24 hours to make the world safe. In real life, it only takes a few minutes to do the same for our children. Don't let them run into trouble on the internet. Use common sense. Iowa Lottery winning numbers tonight. Pick three, five, eight, two, five, eight, two. Pick four, three, nine, two, five, three, nine, two, five. Rolling cash five, 14, 21, 25, 27, 28. 14, 21, 25, 27, 28. Hope you had a winner tonight in the Ohio Lottery. Maddox back to work. So are the Reds trying to come up with something. Two runs, six hits for the Dodgers. Zip, zip, zip for the Reds. Here's Clayton who walked. The Reds have had three free passes so far. Two by Hatterberg and one by Clayton back in the third. J.D. Drew playing here tonight. His brother Stephen Drew hit his second home run in his rookie year with Arizona today. The Diamondbacks split two with the Cubs, winning the first 10 to 2, losing the second 7 to 3. So the Diamondbacks remain one half game back of the Reds. This weekend, Fox Network will be in town to give you Reds baseball on Saturday as the Braves come to town. There's a bouncer for Kyle Scoops. He's got a cannon and he throws out Clayton. Nice play by Raphael for Kyle. You know, I don't know what it is about some guys who can run awfully fast and throw awfully hard. I think for Kyle can play just about anywhere on the infield and or outfield, maybe even pitch with a gun like that. Well, B comes up and makes a very fine play right there and thwarts a a hit effort by Royce Clayton. I mean, probably the hardest throwing shortstop arm we've seen of the last generation is Sean Dunstan mm -hmm. at third. I mean, he was drafted ahead of Dwight Gooden in the same year. But for Kyle, probably ranked second on that list. I'll tell you, as far as quick releases for Kyle's got him. I mean, Dunstan. Never did. I mean, he had a great year, a great career as a shortstop, but he never really did get to the point where he could just lob it over across the infield. He had to throw it full blast every time. For Cal, has that medium speed when he has to. 0 oh, and 2 to Milton inside. Mark Grace, the former Cub first baseman, used to say he dreaded those slow hoppers to the middle of the infield because when Dunstan would get through it, <laughs> He'd get to it. He's going to throw it just as hard as if he was in the hole. It's like self defense to try to catch it. That's a call strike three. Milton, who bounced into a double play first time up, strikes out. That's strikeout number three for Greg Maddox. Two away, and here comes Ryan Friel, and this one gets a little more interesting every inning. Two away here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Ryan Friel up for the third time, and the Reds. Still trying to break through against Maddox.
What a night for the Dodger clubhouse welcoming Greg Maddox to that clubhouse after the July 31st trading deadline. He pitches for the first time and here's a pop up for Kyle calling. He's got it. It's another one two three for Maddox. He's whitewashed the red so far to the seventh. Betterment will lead it off. The Hyundai Challenge is on. We're out to prove our new Tucson is a better value than CRV or RAV4. To start, JD Power and Associates just named the Hyundai Tucson highest ranked compact multi activity vehicle in initial quality. Tucson comes with America's best warranty. Take the Hyundai Challenge during the Hyundai Challenge Summer Clearance and take home an award recognized Tucson. Get up to $1,500 cash back. Lease a new Tucson for just $199 a month at your local Hyundai dealer. Offer ends August 31st. Fantasy football has arrived. Fox Fantasy Football is completely free with the most advanced features anywhere, including a draft kit, custom settings, and live scoring. All free of charge. Log on to foxsports.com and create or join a league today. The FSN final score tonight. On Sunday, August 6, Reds and American Girl are giving the first 6,000 kids 14 and younger that enter the Main Street entrance of the ballpark an American Girl doll size Reds warm up jacket. This red jacket was designed specifically for the American Girl dolls, which will be given away during the game by checking the scoreboard to see if your seat is a winner. Make it a special day at the ballpark on Sunday, August the 6th, thanks to American Girl and the Reds. Postcard entries accepted for the Dow giveaway. Hitters think hitting, Maddox thinks pitching next to Rick Honeycutt. And Honeycutt was a good one, too, Chris, for the Dodgers and a whole lot of other teams. Well, he was never an overpowering pitcher, George, but he was a guy that knew what he was doing on the mound. Very thoughtful pitcher all the time, and he could throw some strikes. I just got to feel though that even as good as Honeycutt was he's got to probably he'll probably learn more in the next couple of months from Greg Maddox than, than he's learned in the previous five or ten years. Back to back change up two strikes to Betterman 0 and 2. Wilson struck out flied out. Betterman Martin Repco do up here in the bottom of seven. Both bullpens quiet tonight. Two outstanding pitching performances. Swing and a miss. That's a strikeout. One away in the seventh. Here comes Russell Martin. Time for our Geico direct quote of the night. Martin has been outstanding behind the plate, and what a night for him getting to catch a future Hall of Famer. Um, I mean, I'm excited. I mean, I, I used to watch him uh, when I was younger, and uh, you know, I've, al I've always been a big Greg Maddox fan. Just. Uh, he just knows so much about baseball and about the game that um, I can't help but to be excited. So uh, trying to calm the nerves now and, and getting ready to go uh, catch a good game. Good approach, huh? I'd say he's doing a pretty good job so far, George. I see a whole bunch of zeros up there in the Cincinnati column. Runs, hits, and errors. Yeah, we talked earlier about what can a pitcher like this do in a pennant race. I mean, yes, Greg Maddox can win games for you. And we talked a lot about it when Maddox went back to Chicago with the likes of a Zambrano and a Pryor and a Wood, young pitchers there. If you're smart, you attach yourself to him if you're a young pitcher and a young catcher and learn as much as you can while he's there because he can make you better, irrespective of how many games he wins. That's exactly right. Two balls, one strike to Martin. I remember talking to Paul Bacco, the former Cincinnati Red catcher in the minor leagues who was traded. And then, of course, he was one of the quote unquote designated catchers for Greg Maddox. He said, I learned more catching with Maddox 
in one season than I learned in my whole career. Yeah, it's interesting <laughs> you bring up Paul Bacco because I was talking to last night's Dodger starter Brad Penny before the game and he told me that of all the catchers he had the guys he's enjoyed most to, to, to catch him was Paul Bacco and this was after he caught Greg Maddox and Bacco almost went through a transformation. Uh, in the way he called a game and the way he thought along with the game plan. Of course, you go in with a certain scatter report and a game plan tailored to the pitcher, but he says it was it was like we were on the same page and wanted to do what I wanted to do. He read me, he read the opposition, read the scatter report, and put it all together. And Maddox can help you concise things if you're around him enough. There's a liner to right. There goes Free, a little drop in front of him. He bounces up. They got a shot at him at second. Here's the throw. He'll be safe as the throw is wide. Great job by Friel to make it close. That looked like a sure bet double when it left the bat. Martin's now three for three, two singles and a double, in spite of a great effort by Ryan Friel. Uh, Martin went to the left side of second base the first couple of times up that time he's thinking about taking the breaking ball the other way and boy he lets it get deep in the batter's box before he swings at it and he gets a bat part of the bat on it. Good play by Freel. We've seen him make a couple of dandy plays like this and the throw would have to be perfect. It wasn't. But he makes something out of a something nothing something out of nothing right there and he got some fans to their feet. Oh one out double and here's Repco. This one blooped to second. Aurelia there. Nice pitch by Milton got in on him. There's your second out. Well, he's owned Repco all night long. He's had that changeup working. A couple of fastballs inside right there sawed him off. And what you're hearing is thunder in the distance and a bolt of lightning that came just before it. You heard the ooze in the eyes of the fans. So that thunderstorm that we were told was going to move in around 10. Guess what? It's knocking at the door, Chris. It's uh, 10 till 10. Just about 10 minutes early that thunderstorm is. Do you know where your thunderstorms are? Here's Maddox slashes this one to the right side. Aurelia has it. And they erase the base runner. The left stranded Martin after his third hit. Maddox is black. Blank in the red so far. It's 2 nothing. It's now time for our Tri-State Chevy dealer's seventh inning stretch. Chevy model year end event is here. Now's the time to get the best selection on a great lineup of 06 Chevys. So make your move. They're going fast. Plus, right now, qualified buyers can get 0% APR on almost every 06 Chevy. Claim yours before they're gone. Visit a participating Tri-State Chevy dealer and receive two complimentary Cincinnati Reds baseball tickets. Changing the outcome for kids from around the world. Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Champagne, gentlemen. Oh. Don't worry, I got us covered. What is that? It's a Coors Light cooler box. 18 plastic bottles and a ready-made cooler. All we need is ice. Genius. Go anywhere towards Light Cooler Box. Just add ice and enjoy. <laughs> to the bride. Coors Light. Taste the cold. Do whatever it takes to get Sarah back. From the network that brought you 24 and Prison Break. She's gonna miss you before. 12 years ago. Comes television's next great thriller. Go ahead. Vanished. Series premiere this month on Fox. Reds baseball on FSN being brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on your car insurance. Visit us at Geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. And by Hyundai. Take the Hyundai Challenge. Visit the HyundaiChallenge.com. And guess what? The challenge is on here in Cincinnati. Maddox out to the mound, ready to deliver his first pitch. Dana DeMuth says, bring out the tarp. Get off the field. The lightning and thunder have arrived. So now has the rain. It's coming down in torrents right now. And the Reds grounds crew 
busy of late with a whole lot of rainstorms that have been moving through. They've got this down pretty good, Chris. Unfortunately, they've been called upon to do it too much. The tarp will hit the field. It'll be our second rain delay of the night. Well, you know, George, with the way that Greg Maddox is throwing the ball, uh, this may work in the Reds' advantage. It happened a few weeks ago that Aaron Harang was throwing the ball extremely poorly and gave up a bunch of runs early on. There was a long rain delay. He did not make the call the last when he came back out. Steve Traxel did come back out after a two and a half hour rain delay and the Reds got him pretty good. So maybe this little rain delay right here can get the Reds back on track and a little uh, maybe the Los Angeles Dodgers off kilter right now. The Reds have been able really to manage nothing off of Greg Maddox and nothing is really reality because the Reds do not have a hit as we we're set to go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Maddox has been just about perfect all night long. He allowed two walks to Hatterberg, one walk to Clayton, and that's it. And, you know, not quite the same, but we remember, Chris, uh, I mean, Tom Browning's perfect game came after a two hour rain delay. Rain somehow has a way of entering into games and strange scenarios, doesn't it? It certainly does. You just really never know. The grounds crew right now just finishing the last touches of putting that big tarp on the field. And, you know, this, this field drains well. There's no question about it. So I'm sure that based on what the weather reports are that this is going to be a temporary shower. We're going to play more baseball tonight but uh, it'll be interesting to see how long this rain delay will be and if Greg Maddox will answer the bell after the rain delay is over. I have a lot to do with how long that rain delay will be. Well we are in a rain delay second rain delay of the night. It started at 954 Cincinnati time earlier tonight. We had a one hour and five minute rain delay at the start of the game. Well we'll hang in here and wait on the rain situation. There'll be a delay. How long we're not sure. According to the radar it looks like the band of thunderstorm should move through. We should be OK to resume. How long we'll fill you in as soon as we know. So while we wait out the rain delay let's go to the best sports show period for Chris Welch. This is George Grant. We'll hang in here in Cincinnati.
ready to go. So I'm wondering, uh, given the fact that the Reds have the left-handed part of their lineup coming up, whether Greg Maddox probably won't be there. They've got but one left-hander in the bullpen. That would be Joe Bimel. So no official indication yet. We're just trying to peer out there through the grate with sunglasses or with uh, binoculars and trying to figure out what's going on. And Greg Maddox has been the story and for Eric Milton he's pitched well too. He's allowed only seven hits and two runs. Those two came in the first. Raphael for Kyle single stretched his hitting streak to ten straight and then Almedo signs hit his ninth homer of the year. He came in brilliant against lefties this year hitting 425 against left handers and he touched Eric Milton for the two run home run in the first inning so it was a two nothing lead in the first and that was it and Eric Milton has pitched very well through these six innings. He certainly has a very similar to his last outing actually that uh, was a seven inning three run performance he gave up all three runs in the first inning in his last time out and then really settled down ditto that tonight for Eric Milton he started out giving up that two spot to L.A. in the first inning and they really haven't had a whole lot of threatening uh, base runners or anything else going on in the meantime so Eric Milton eventually got the breaking ball working eventually began to get the feel of the change up and that spelled trouble for the Dodgers and the Reds are right in this ball game, trailing two to nothing. Eric Milton settled down pitch well and he'd been matched by Greg Maddox there's for Kyle loosening still some standing water in the foul line areas but uh, for the all intents and purposes the field itself is in fine condition as uh, Doug Gallon and his crew are trying to spread some quick dry around the wettest spots around the dirt part but Milton's been good Maddox has just been a little bit better and for Greg Maddox tonight Chris other than the three walks he was El Perfecto. Yeah, I'll tell you what you know he had it working tonight he was able to get the left handers looking inside them pulling off the fastball or pulling off the changeup that is on the outer part of the plate really have there not been all that many hard hit balls tonight. Well on this night it's been a story about pitching but let's go back in time for one of the most offensive nights in Cincinnati Reds history. Remember this one Chris back in 89 it was against the Houston Astros and Cincinnati banged out 14 runs in the first inning. Todd Benzinger had high fives for everybody. Mariano Duncan who's coaching first base for the Dodgers tonight got it all started on that night. I'll tell you what uh, somebody's going to suck up some earned run averages in that ball game if you give up 14 runs in the first inning. You got guys hiding and not answering the bullpen phone there by the second inning. Mariano was one for four and a couple of runs scored. Ken Griffey Sr. was three for five, a couple of runs scored, a homer and four knocked in. You went down the list and just about everybody contributed. Eric Davis, who's in town tonight, by the way, will hopefully visit with him tomorrow night. He's going to be in for the weekend. ED on the night was three for four, a couple of runs scored and a couple of runs knocked in. It was a night to remember, 18 to two. The Reds after a 14 run first inning and uh, a lot of us remember that night nobody more than uh, Howdy Browdy John Browdy who was the Reds PR director and the PA announcer. I think he had a horse night after that. Yeah, first that's inning. the kind of night that you stay up all night long looking up when was the last time that this kind of thing happened and uh, that's what PR directors do. But you know George they scored 14 in the first inning they only got four the rest of the way so the Astros really shut him down. <laughs> <laughs> One way of looking at it well on this night Greg Maddox had shut the Reds down and it does not appear he'll be coming out and you know you, you scramble and you look and you wonder we've talked about it earlier the Tom Browning perfect game started off with a lengthy rain delay there have been a series of games we just had the John Lieber game uh, recently where he had a no hitter against the Reds going deep into the ball game and tonight Maddox was about as good as he can be Chris. I'll tell you what he really has been George one thing he's been very good at this year is his control and you know there was a lot said over the last few years that Quest Tech would be the end of Greg Maddox and a guy like Tommy Glavin who was so good at expanding the strike zone but great pitchers are great pitchers and Greg Maddox has continued his mastery of the of the Reds anyway he came into this ball game having won 21 career games against the Reds and over 50 games against this Reds ball club and He's on his way to get another victory. It looks like if the Los Angeles Dodgers bullpen can do its job, but the Reds still have three whacks at him. Their only real threats that the Reds have had on this night, Javier Valentin hit a line shot to the wall in right field that J.D. Drew caught for the final out in the fifth inning. Now the Dodgers have had a couple of double plays on the night, and other than that, Maddox has been in complete control. Dana DeMuth has had a busy night delaying the start of the game due to the threat of rain. It never really poured, although there were some sprinkles, and then this rain delay 
which all told will probably be about 45 minutes by the time it's all said and done. Now DeMuth is ready to go. He's just taking one last tour around the field to make sure everything is OK. Well the rain came down so quickly and so hard that's what's really delaying it right now because if the you know if it doesn't come down hard from the very beginning if it kind of drizzles first and then builds into a downpour the 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 uh, the field staff here the ground crew has a chance to get the tarp on the field very quickly before it really gets very wet but it was bringing it I mean it was really bringing it hard just like about that and the ground crew couldn't get the, the tarp down before the field got somewhat wet so they've got a lot of bags of uh, field dry out there trying to rake that in and get the field back into playing condition. Now the rain has stopped the guys are doing a great job and this has been a rough month for the grounds crew here in Cincinnati but they've been equal to the task the last homestand was one of the toughest homestands they would had in a long long time. And by the way while we've got a moment we can catch up on the other games that are pertinent they're now in the top of the eighth inning at Bush Stadium in St. Louis the Phillies lead the Cardinals five to one. In that game Chase Utley's got a couple of hits already so he stretched his hitting streak to 35 straight this afternoon Arizona which started the day one half game back of the Reds in the wild card hunt split a doubleheader winning the first 10 to 2 over the Cubs the Cubs won the second 7 to 3 so at this moment the Diamondbacks are a half game back There's Doug Gallon and Dana DeMuth talking about that the rest of the National League scores Pittsburgh beat the Braves three to two Atlanta. Uh, here by now in Cincinnati after coming from Pittsburgh they are in the hotel and ready to play the Reds tomorrow night Bobby Cox's crew is in town San Diego five to two over Houston that's a final and also a final Florida has beaten the Mets the final four to one that's your National League scoreboard picture in the American League final scores the Yankees won eight to one over Toronto today Corey Lytle's first start was a good one Cleveland beat Boston seven to six so a pick up of one game for the Yankees. Two to one was your final Tampa Bay over Detroit in the ninth Minnesota leads Kansas City eight to two and in the second Texas one and the Angels nothing and we're just about ready to play some baseball here as the story will be end of night for Greg Maddox as Joe Bimo will be the guy who comes out Chris All right, Greg Maddox overall the night then pitches six innings of nearly perfect baseball and he gave up three bases on balls but did not give up a hit nor a run against the Reds in his effort his first effort as a Los Angeles Dodger so the Dodgers trade for a 300 game winner and the benefits are paying off already they'll give way to Bimel and Bimel's the only left hander in the bullpen the reason he's in there right now is because the Reds are in that left handed part of the batting order where you've got Scott Hatterberg. Ken Griffey Jr. and Adam Dunn going back to back to back in the order two three and four in the lineup. Seventy two pitches from Maddox that tells you another part of his great story tonight and Bimel is ready to go to work and of course there's another part of history as you look at Bimel starting to loosen there have been a series of multiple pitcher no hitters too. the Reds Kent Merker involved in one. Tom Browning of course pitched his perfect game against the Dodgers and Johnny Vandermeer back in 1938 had a no hitter against the Dodgers as well. The Dodgers have more no hitters than anybody 20 no hitters as a franchise 10 in Brooklyn and 10 in Los Angeles and by mold going to try to keep it going the Reds are hopeful maybe this will turn their fortunes on this night. Oh you know it's happened before George anything that can can change the momentum of a ball game. I'm a big believer in baseball energy if you want to put it that way and uh, maybe the Reds need a little rain delay their bats have been cooled off maybe this rain will cool off the Dodgers pitching a little bit and the Reds can get something going certainly this part of the order where you think that uh, is your best shot. So here's Hatterberg he's been on base twice for Cincinnati tonight a walk in the first a walk in the fourth and we're just about ready to get underway the rain delay started at nine fifty four. It'll be just about 45 minutes by the time we play again. Second rain delay of the night. So Hatterberg trying to get the Reds rolling here in the bottom of seven. Hatterberg, Griffey, and Dunn do up. 46 minute rain delay is the end result of that first pitch. 46 minutes that combined with an hour and five at the start of the contest. Bimel to Hatterberg. Last night home run number 10 for Scott Hatterberg. Uh, he got a hanger right there from Brad Penny and launched it. 
Reds really couldn't get a whole lot back to back against Brad Penny. They did get three solo shots and Hatterberg beginning to get the long ball stick out. Fouled at the plate one and two. You know, we kind of kidded about Maddox not getting his number 31. Well, after he did this well in 36, maybe he'll stick with that number. <laughs> he pitched great with it tonight. And you're right, it is the guy in the uniform, not the number that's on the uniform. He'll be the first to tell you. <laughs> Meaning that he's not superstitious. I'm not saying he's a, he's a he's a braggart in any way. Very understated. One thing you have when you bring Bimal into a ball game is you, you increase the odds of eliminating or at least limiting the number of home runs you give up. Lefty versus lefty for him, it goes way down. Bimal is the lone lefty in this bullpen. There are five righties. Brett Tomko, the former Red, who was a starter, uh, had a full muscle in his side. He's bounced back and forth from the starting to the bullpen rotation, and right now he's in the bullpen. Elmer descends, the former Red. There's BT right there. Roxton, Herrera, and Sato came in last night and wrapped up the victory. So we're full three balls and two strikes. Good job of working the count for Scott Hatterberg. That's looking for base runners, looking for runs here in the seventh. That's a base hit. First hit of the night for the Reds comes off the bat of Scott Hatterberg. He's on base for the third time this evening. Boy, this is a very good at bat for Scott Hatterberg because he fouled off some pretty tough pitches along the way. Finally got one. Bible had to come in there and throw a strike. And he sizzled it into the right center field. Our Ohio lottery instant replay. Yep, a base hit to start the inning off, but it's a first base hit considering the fact they're already in the seventh inning. That's worth being the our Ohio lottery instant replay. So leadoff hitter on. Here comes Junior, six game hitting streak. He's bounced into a double play and bounced back to the pitcher. Both of those at bats against Maddox. Reds fans, if you're looking to get more out of your grill this summer, try JTM's Grill and Ribs. Packed in convenient resealable bags. JTM, more of what you're hungry for. Mimel will toss over to first. Mimel against Griffey in their matchups. Junior one for three, no homers. Dunn, who's on deck, is two for seven and one homer against Joe Bimel when, of course, these Reds hitters faced Bimel when he was in Pittsburgh in the Pirate bullpen. Pass ball misses inside. All time home run leaders last night, Junior hit number 558. Now only five back of Reggie Jackson, 563 on the all time list. Gonna miss one and two. Jackson is tenth on the list at 563. Raphael Palmero 569 is ninth, and the killer Harmon Killebrew at 573, eighth on the all-time list. Part of the equation answered. Bimel comes out. Maddox out. Now the next part of the equation would be the story behind Eric Milton. And there is action in the Reds bullpen. That's on the outside corner of strike. Griffey thought it was wide. Nana DeMuth says, uh-uh, that's a strike and it's a punch out. Pretty much a perfect pitch right there. You talk about hitting your target at the knees on the corner. One out, one on, and here comes Dunn. Dunn struck out, then grounded out. A ground out last time to second by Adam Dunn, ended a string of six consecutive strikeouts that Dunn had. One the last at bat in the first game of the series, four last night, and then one in the first at bat tonight. He's hit well against lefties this year, and two for seven against Bimel with the one homer. Two 
Two balls, no strikes. 32 homers on the year, 11 of those against lefties for Adam Dunn this year. Setting up away again is Martin. Five homers and 13 knocked in against the Dodgers. Over the years, the Dodgers have pitched him very well. He's under a 200 hitter against LA. Looks like Mimo just keeping the fastball on him in this at bat, too. Down up there, probably expecting at some point the breaking ball. Hasn't seen it yet. A pretty good sink on that fastball right there. Decided to come inside after going away, away, away. A nice downward, downward movement on that fastball. That had very good sink on it. Well, he faces these two lefties after giving up the base hit to Hatterberg. So back to back to back lefties. Here comes Aurelia and here comes Grady Little out to get the ball from his left hander. So Bimo did what he was expected to do. He got two of the three lefties he faced. So with one on, two out, Aurelia comes in, and it's time for our Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. You're watching Reds Baseball on FSN. The Chevy Model Year End Event is here. Now's the time to get the best selection on a great lineup of 06 Chevys. So make your move. They're going fast. Plus, right now, qualified buyers can get 0% APR on almost every 06 Chevy. Claim yours before they're gone. Visit a participating Tri-State Chevy dealer and receive two complimentary Cincinnati Reds baseball tickets. Electronics, providing the best in cutting-edge home entertainment. Alamo showcases the brands you know, offering high-definition and digital television, flat-screen, plasma, LCD, big-screen and projection TVs. Let Alamo show you contemporary custom installation ideas. Those who know and appreciate quality home entertainment electronics, shop at Alamo. Not to pay more, but to get more. Alamo Electronics, 9572 Montgomery Road in Montgomery. Now the Dodgers go to a right-hander, a big hard-throwing right-hander, six feet three inches of 288 pounds. Jonathan Broxton, he's from Augusta, Georgia, and he comes into this ball game one for three and save and save opportunities, but he is a hard thrower with a pretty good breaking ball, and he'll face the right-handed part of the order as Jerry Naren went back to back to back with lefties. Now Rich Aurelia. Made it up to the Dodgers last year. This guy was a closer through the minor leagues and they hope at some point in time might evolve into that role at the major league level again. He's facing Aurelia with two outs and one on. Base hit by Hatterberg has left him at first. There's strike one. Rich, two ground balls to third. He's also got a six game hitting streak that he's trying to stretch. Broxton, a Georgia native, still lives in Georgia. Pretty lively fastball dials it up anywhere from 94 to 96 97 miles an hour and that one had some giddy up didn't it. Uh, you get that pitch that four seamer out of a guy like Broxton who's pretty much an over over the over the top thrower. You get that ball up around the letters awfully tough to get on top of as a hitter. Trying to hang in there, really a pop 
walks it foul and out of play. The Braves have gotten in town already preparing for the weekend series. The Dodgers trying to get out of town and the Reds trying to get them to leave town with a defeat Cincinnati trailing it 2 nothing here in the bottom of seven Atlanta has already won today their afternoon affair beating by the pit losing to Pittsburgh by a final score of three to two and they've flown into town here. Swing and a miss Broxton gets the third strike out of the inning the Red Strand their first base hit of the night still two nothing going to the eighth. Bring you the series that is revolutionizing poker forever. With all new groundbreaking technology that puts you inside the game like never before. The future of tournament poker has arrived. The MansionPoker.net Poker Dome Challenge series continues Sunday on FSN. Coming up on the next Meyer Kentucky Speedway Racing Report. What's quick? How about 500 champion Sam Hornish Jr.? What's fast? It's Andretti Green Racing, who beat NASCAR to Danica, the hottest driver in the sport. The IRL comes to Kentucky on our next show. Sundays at noon, only on FSN Ohio. Today's action is sponsored by Meyer. From power saws to produce, video games to milk, Meyer is the undisputed champion of higher standards, lower prices. You're watching Red Baseball on FSN Ohio. Hey, looking for a place to celebrate after Reds games. We'll stop by the fan zone for the Taco Bell late night concert series on the Bud True Music Stage. This post game concert begins immediately following Friday and Saturday home games. Features Dangerous Jim and the Slims this Friday and a special concert Saturday, August 5th. Do not miss national recording artist Blessed Union of Souls. Check out the Taco Bell late night concert series for music, drinks, and more, including Blessed Union of Souls on August the 5th. Now the starter Eric Milton the left hander is gone he pitched pretty well after giving up a couple of runs in the first inning came around big time and put nothing but zeros up on the board for the Dodgers through the next six innings seven innings of two runs seven hit baseball did not walk a batter gives way to Todd Coffey third night in a row that he has seen the Los Angeles Dodgers in this series. Top of the order Raphael for Cal. Stretched his hitting streak to 10 straight with a base hit first time up. He's one for three in the first. For Kyle, hit the second pitch he saw for a base hit off Milton. Then after Milton got Lugo and Drew, signs Homer to make it 2 0, and that's all we've had all night long. From the stretch, Coffee. Hey, where else but McCluskey Chevrolet? Zero percent financing, down payment assistance up to six thousand dollars, and guaranteed credit approval. Call the one number today, seven six one 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 one. As important as for Kyle has been in the second half of the season to the Dodgers, that's how much. The Braves have missed him. They had a great combination of for Kyle at the top of the order and Marcus Giles behind him. Tough to replace somebody like that at the top of your order. He's one of the best two or three leadoff hitters in the game of baseball. He combines power, speed, he can steal a base. 
He's an igniter at the top of the order. Now well, the Braves have never had a history of really chasing down free agents even their own departing players by mm -hmm. paying them what they may think is too much money. If you need to go they'll turn the page you win 14 pennants in a row or at least 14 division titles in a row you're doing something right. Left center field hit pretty good done looking up going to the scoreboard it's going to be off the wall. And for Kyle will pick up another two base hit. Rafael for Kyle steams into second his second double of the series another two hit ball game. Yeah got to be somewhat disappointing for Todd Coffey because he had for Cal 0 and 2 at one point for Cal eventually got the batting count to even a 2 2 and he got a pitch up and just kind of inside out of that ball nearly left the yard. Now we've seen him run we've seen him throw exceptionally well and he can swing the bat and he's got some obviously he's got some serious bat speed. Two doubles in the series, 22 for the year. He's in scoring position. And here comes Lugo, who's 0 for 3. Dodgers picking up Lugo from Tampa Bay. He played short most of the time there. He's playing second right now. The guy that gives you for Kyle Lugo and what Lofton plays, three great speedsters at the top of your order. In game box of this one, the Runs the Dodgers have have come at the top of the order for Kyle two hits scored a run on the Olmedo signs home run that was in the first inning. And that's all the scoring for the Dodgers. Just tuned in. You saw Maddox six inning pitch, no hits. Yep. He left after the rain delay with a no hitter. Went six innings, didn't allow the Reds Zippo through those six, just three walks. The Reds got a hit in the seventh off Joe Bimo. Two balls and one strike. Easily. So the new acquisition Lugo will have two. Will he try for three? Yes, he will. He'll steam into third with a three base hit. His first triple for the Dodgers after coming over from the American League. And the Dodgers play add on here in the eighth. A double by for Kyle, a triple by Lugo, and it's three nothing. And out comes Jerry Naren. Uh, this is the shade of the time that the, right before the All Star break when the Reds bullpen was really scuffling, they'd make a close ball game into a blowout quickly. And Lugo shows some very good hitting that way a little inside out job down the right field line he'll scamper all the way to third for Cal easily scores and it's now a three nothing ball game. Not a bad pitch down and in Lugo did a good job of hitting it and it's three nothing so that'll be it for coffee. Jerry Naren's going with the lefty and while the pitching change takes place we'll take time out for these messages you're watching Reds baseball on FSN. Want to play where the pros do? Then enter the Tri-State Chevy Dealers Great American Ballpark Experience. 20 lucky winners will be chosen to show off their skills on the Reds' home field. Winners will dress in the locker room, take home an authentic jersey, and enjoy great food at the ballpark. All you have to do is register online at www.trichevy.com. Remember, registration ends August 31st. Here's your chance to make your dreams come true. Enter the Tri-State Chevy Dealers Great American Ballpark Experience. Keep watching FSN Ohio for more details. Dan, do I look pale to you? Pale? Someone just said I could use some color. It's the booklets, Jerry. They're talking about color charts, color covers. Then I guess I'm off to the Rico color printer. Don't forget your sunblock. Move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. I keep it in my bedroom. Here it is. My White Castle freezer. Here's where I keep the sliders, jalapeno cheeseburgers, flavored chicken rings. They're new. 
I figure they're good to have around in case there's another Y2K, or if I get hungry later. White Castle's new flavored chicken rings, seasoned with ranch or Tabasco. My kids grew up on them. Back on is Todd Coffey. He faced two batters, gave up a double and a triple. Enter the left-hander, 23-year-old Bill Bray. July the 13th was the date that he was traded from the Nationals, along with Gary Majeski and Royce Clayton, some minor leaguers for Felipe Lopez and Austin Kearns. A hard-throwing lefty with a very tight slider. They'll need it against this guy. Here comes J.D. Drew. Drew. Two fly balls to left and a pop up to short. Bray against Drew with another runner in scoring position. Still no one out, and Lugo's down at third. The Reds forced to bring the infield in. Good speed down at third, and Lugo. 